So I talked up this talk. Better be good. Uh, I was sent this video, this uh, video of a, an Alan Watts talk by one of our old students, and I just loved it. So I thought I'd kind of ex expand on the idea. Uh, you've heard me talk a little bit about it recently. But who's heard Alan Watts before? Yeah. So the last classes I asked that in, it was not meditation class. Everybody was like, Alan Watts? What? But you guys know. So that's good. Uh, if you haven't, you should, you should listen to Alan Watts. He's much better than I am. But I'm going to do my best to, to steal the good stuff. Uh, he, he makes reference to this quote, which is originally by the Buddha, but made famous by Bruce Lee in Enter the Dragon. Uh, Buddha is talking about him, himself and the teachings as being a finger pointing to the moon. And if you remember this iconic scene in Enter the Dragon, uh, Bruce Lee is talking to a young student who he just handed his butt to in a sparring session, and he says, it's like the finger pointing to the moon. And the student goes like this, like staring at the thing, and Bruce Lee hits him on the head. He's like, don't, don't stare at the finger, or you miss all that heavenly glory. And this idea is basically like, we as human beings, we get so attached to the teacher, the teachings, the concepts, uh, even the practice, you know, even the practice of meditation, even the idea of sitting, and we think like that's the thing. And on some level, that's true. On some level, there's no question if you are just sitting and meditating regularly, even if your meditation is awful, you are still doing something right. If you're sitting and meditating, that should be enough. And if you become like obsessed with the, the knowledge and you become obsessed with the ideas that are within the sutras and all of the amazing literature out there and you confuse the teachings with what they're pointing to, you get nowhere. And I've been just as guilty of this as everybody else. I love reading spirituality. I love, uh, you know, I, I love just even preparing for the talk and I'm thinking like, this is going to be a good talk. This talk, they're finally going to get it. And it's going to make me seem like really deep and really amazing. And like all of this getting attached to the thing that's pointing. Uh, the thing is beyond. It's beyond my ability to explain. It's beyond anybody's ability to explain. And whatever the thing is, like if you're, if you're here listening to me hoping that I'm going to give it to you, you're not going to get it. I'm doing this. That's it. It's all that I'm ever doing. And a lot of people, they're like, oh, you know, Sifu's a great teacher, and they're doing this. Whether I was a great teacher or not, whether, you know, I was amazing at giving meditation talks, and I'll be much better in 20 or 30 years from now or not, but that, that is pointless. I could just stand here and be totally silent, and it's, it's what I'm pointing to that matters. Uh, if you've read the Tao Te Ching, there's this, this very famous idea of the, that which can be named, or the Tao that is named is not the eternal. Uh, as soon as you try to put it into words, you limit it, and as soon as you point at it, you become attached to the pointing, and you become limited by concepts. So I'm going to try to play around with this idea a little bit. So Alan Watts' is talk, he's talking about the finger. He says, if you, if you take your dog and you point, the dog looks at the finger. They think that's the idea. And human beings do the same thing. Well, Leah made this point to me yesterday. She said, well, actually, my dog is very well trained. And when I point to something, my dog looks at the direction that I'm pointing and my dog gets it. We're not that well trained. We don't get it. We absolutely do not get it. We confuse, um, you know, these thoughts and concepts and readings and everything. We confuse that with reality, just like we're confusing the finger with the moon. And if your dog is untrained, your dog looks at your finger when you point. And your dog thinks that your dog thinks that's the whole idea. But it really takes something to get uh, a human being or any creature to recognize that there is something beyond that. That 
that there's something that they have to go and kind of seek out for themselves. And so one of the one of the best things that I could ever give to anybody is what Sifu Brown gave to me. It's like a, a lot of what I give you guys is just regurgitating what Sifu Brown says or what somebody else smart says, but some of it is stuff that I just kind of figured out and or at least have figured out in my own way. And that is what there is for you to do is to is to be the dog that actually looks at the finger sees the direction it's pointing in and runs and go with whatever there is there for you and you might stumble and you might run into a a thorn bush and get lost and then come back out and just do whatever you can but you got to take it and run uh there's another saying by chong su he's describing what he says is the perfect man the perfect man employs his mind as a mirror it grasps nothing. It refuses... N- oh, wait a minute. I skipped ahead. Employs his mind as a mirror. It refuses nothing. It grasps nothing. It receives, but it doesn't keep. So, this is a little bit confusing, but you think of your mind... This, this is what Mu Shin is. The experience of Mu Shin is uh, non-attachment. And it's not like a mirror only reflecting like I'm rubber, you're glue, what you say to me bounces off of me and sticks to you like I don't take anything. It's like it receives it and it takes it on but it doesn't become attached to it. And a perfectly clear mind, a mind that is in the state of Mu Shin, reflects reality perfectly. A perfectly clear mind does not put anything in the way. So if you take a mirror and you you know, rub soap on it, and you look at it, and it's all foggy, and you can't actually see anything through it. That's, that's what our minds are usually like. But if you go deep into meditation, for example, and even for a moment, you're able to completely clear your mind. It reflects reality, absolutely. And the example that Alan Watts gives is the mind hears... Uh, most human beings take that and think it's a bird or they think it's a song but a perfectly clear mind hears and it understands that's it and doesn't add anything doesn't subtract anything doesn't let it get foggy doesn't confuse it it is just absolutely as it is now you can imagine what this would be like if you were practicing martial arts and you were able to have your mind like this because when you you know, stand in front of your partner and you're sparring and you see your partner move, immediately your mind starts to work and the, the wheels start to crank and it's making up all kinds of stuff. It's like, they're going to throw the left hand. They're going to, they just threw the left hand, so I know now they're going to throw the right hand. No, my partner doesn't like punching. My partner's going to try to throw me. Uh, my partner hit me five seconds ago and that really hurt. Or, I just missed and I feel like an idiot. All this stuff that's going on in your head, this is a show that we make up for ourselves. This is not reality. The perfectly clear mind is a mirror, sees what your partner does, and is able to accept it without adding into adding anything at all to it, and is able to say, punch comes. It's not even saying move. It's just like the punch is there, and your body does what it has been trained to do. Uh, this is so beyond difficult to do that I, I can't even get you guys to comprehend it. But if you have sparred, you've, you've understood it. Even if from cl- today's class, when I was clapping and you throw the strike and then I didn't clap and you threw the strike and for a moment you went, oh, I screwed up again. I'm such an idiot. And I saw some of you laughing at you, yourself. I saw some of you laughing at the person standing next to you or in front of you. And what happens is we get attached to that thing that happened in the past. So the past is just a way of fogging up the mirror. We're thinking about the future. It's just a way of fogging up the mirror. You're thinking, he's about to clap, he's about to clap. And that's when you guys are like this, and you're like leaning, your body is tense, and you're so ready to go, and you just like fall, because because there was something in the way. But if you can stand there perfectly still and wait, 
and have no thoughts and have nothing fogging up your mirror, then you respond. You, you are just a reflection of the count. Your body is able to, like, literally the speed of light. It's like if you see in this mirror, can you see the mirror on the tape? Let's well, pretend. There's a mirror over here. <laughs> if you see in this mirror, uh, my hand do this. The mirror doesn't have a lag. The mirror's not like, what's happening? Eh, oh, it's a reverse punch. The mirror sees it right away. And that's really the state that we want our minds to be in. This reflection that has no lag in time because it's not thinking about the future, it's not thinking about the past. It's perfectly present. And that's what we're practicing with meditation. When we sit and meditate, inevitably, invariably, we start thinking about something, and that something is usually from the past or from the future. And again, all of that is just a movie that's playing in our head. It's not reality. So when you're sitting, think of this. Like, my job right now is to be a mirror that is just reflecting this moment. Nothing else. Uh, I just said that thing that's written here. So, the, if you think of if you think of it that way, and your mind is a mirror, we understand that this is like a really deep, great state of mind to be in, and. I talk about Mushin all the time, and I think some of us get confused and think, well, Mushin is the point. To be in that state of mind, to be able to be so focused in the moment and connected to reality in this moment, that is the point. Well, that's the same thing as saying that sitting and meditating is the point. On a level, that is the point. And on the first level, when I sit and meditate, I'm doing my job. But then there's an, another deeper level. The meditation points to the level of being in the moment, being totally present. But that can't be it either. Because if that were it, then I just put words to it. And then you know that is not the eternal. That's not it. It's beyond concept. So what is it that we're pointing at with being totally present and in the moment? That's the question for us. That's the thing to run after. That's the thing where you sit and meditate. You get in the moment. You get totally calm. Your mind is clear as a mirror. And then in that connection to reality, we can seek out that further truth. And that further truth might be different for you or, or your experience of it is different for you than it might be for somebody else. But we're talking about the experience of what is beyond, beyond our small selves, the experience of... Uh, God, uh, the universe, the divine, Buddha nature, what is beyond our ability to really comprehend with our logical minds. And maybe something well beyond that, I don't know. But that's what we're really, we're really pointing at with our practice, is that which is beyond, that which is beyond. And when you sit and meditate, it's like really a practice of not being attached even to the moment. I'm, I'm trying to be attached to nothing, nothingness. Uh, and that's hard. That's difficult. And it's as difficult as keeping these mirrors clean. You know, one class... There's sweat all over the mirrors. Even just like a little bit. I mean, I see there's a little bit of fuzz over here. There's a little bit like somebody touched the, the mirror next to the door over there. This, we cleaned these last night already. Smudges. When you sit to meditate, you're going to get a moment of clarity. I remember the first time I sat to meditate. And I sat like I, w I was there. I sat like a rock. And I was totally... Like, I'm doing this. This is it. And I got, I want to say, 0.5 seconds of clarity. And I literally just sat there and breathed for a half of a second. I was like, oh, my God, I'm meditating. It's amazing. I did it. I'm basically enlightened right now. This is it. And it lasted that long. And five minutes later, 
I could not handle it. I was curled up in a fetal position against the wall. That was my first meditation. But I got that moment. I got that moment, and that was enough for me to say, there's something here. Wherever I'm going to get with years of practice, I don't know. But I'm willing to keep trying. And I've had meditations where I, I get a moment of clarity, and I try to hold on to it, and I'm like, i got to keep, keep going after that, keep going after that. I have meditations where I never even get a single moment of clarity, and I'm just, today I'm just going to sit and see what happens, see what comes. Uh, just recognize that just like keeping the mirrors clean, look, keeping the mirrors clean is impossible, and it's way easier than keeping your mind clean as a mirror. So it's, we're talking about 0.5 seconds is an eternity. We're talking about like on the, the point, the point oh, 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 oh until forever, five seconds. Uh, that's the, that is the moment that we're trying to experience and then immediately let that go and move on. So if it sounds impossible, as I just said it is, great, then you've been listening to my talk. And <laughs> If your experience of meditation is that this is frustrating and I'll never get it, great, let that go too. And just be a clean mirror and experience and reflect this moment. As soon as you have the thought that says this is impossible, as soon as you have the thought that says I'm not meditating well enough, all of that stuff is just fog on the mirror. Clean it off, let it go. Reflect this breath, then reflect this breath. And in that breath, you'll find the moment and whatever is beyond that and whatever is beyond that. Sit comfortably.